Here it is. Found it. Thanks, Aaron Rupar. All right, you here. All of you enjoy this. All right, you learned it, champs. And that's not a joke. But look, I'm not going to waste all the time I'm in. I'm going to talk about his running mate. His running mate, Elon Musk. Um, <laughs> seriously. Seriously. Where is Senator Vance after he got asked the simplest question in the world at the debate, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? And after two weeks, he finally said, no, he didn't. That's where he's been spending his time. But uh, that's it. So look, Elon's on that stage, jumping around, skipping like a dipshit on these things. <laughs> You know it. Guys, this man has the juice, all right? This man is only 60 years old. He could serve two terms as VP and could then step up to be president. Like, if he has this kind of energy in eight years, I could really see him going the distance in, in a presidential race. And I think that he would be an improvement on Kamala Harris in basically every conceivable way. A difficult truth. Welcome, Raiders. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here, we'll play, we'll play this again just for you guys. And that's not a joke. But look, I'm not going to waste all the time I'm in. I'm going to talk about his running mate. Yeah, now this is Shimpin. His running mate, Elon Musk. Um... <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Where is Senator Vance after he got asked the simplest question in the world at the debate, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? And after two weeks, he finally said, no, he didn't. That's where he's been spending his time. But uh, that's it. So look, Elon's on that stage, jumping around, skipping like a dipshit on these things. You know it. Think about that. That guy is literally the richest man in the world. By the way, uh, you know, self plug here. Uh, we just put up a video ab about the Elon Musk rally, one of those Elon Musk rallies, anyway, that was recently. Uh, and it's titled, uh, the dumbest rich guy alive. And I think you all should take a watch. Uh, it's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. But anyway, enough self promo. Spending millions of dollars to help Donald Trump buy an election. Now look, they're saying the quiet parts out loud now because Donald Trump has already promised that he would put Elon in charge of government regulations that oversee the businesses that Elon runs. That's a hell of a buy. He could spend billions to make more than 10 billion on the back end. So in other words, Donald Trump in front of the eyes of the American public is promising corruption. That's what he's promising you. And you know what? Excellent rhetorical I don't believe, moves. I don't believe he keeps many promises, but he'll keep that one. I guarantee you he'll keep that one. I mean, this is overall an absolutely devastating attack from Tim Walls. I, I like Tim Walls goes through the goes for the jugular, you know? He's really, really doing good. And uh I'm gonna play this for you guys, but I'm not gonna throw it up on screen just because it is uh Tim Walls on uh Comedy Central with uh Jon Stewart. And I think it's a pretty important little exchange that they have here. It's about a minute long, so here we go. The Cheney thing. <laughs> do, do we really have to do that? Uh, look, I th it goes broader than that. Look, Bernie Sanders, Dick Cheney, Taylor Swift. No, 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 no. Oh, the shooting? No, no, no. Having the Don't. Cheneys on board? No. Nah. You, you can't Dick Cheney or Taylor Swift. No. Nah. <laughs> We're what, a big tent. Did, We're what, a big tent. What country did Taylor Swift get us to invade? No. Yeah. No, don't don't you think though that 
and I do this, I believe this, yeah. there is still a core group of folks out there, you know, your point being, and not joke, the, the, the don't tread on me, the Reagan piece of this, the, the libertarian piece, uh, but the constitutional piece, yes. there are a lot of people out there. I think I think Liz Cheney and Dick Cheney give permission to those folks who want to find a reason to do the right thing. It doesn't mean they agree with us. We're not going to take their foreign policy decisions and discussions, you know, and implement those. We're going to take Pro their... Uh, pro their promise? Yes, promise. <laughs> promise. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, that that's a good exchange, and I'm glad that I'm glad that John Stewart actually like was like you you're going to promise me you're not you're not going to start taking foreign policy advice from Dick Cheney, you know? Cuz Kamala Harris has spooked a lot of people with talk of putting a Republican in her cabinet. And that could really be a problem actually. So yeah, Tim Walls good-naturedly explaining exactly why the Cheneys are being paraded around. They they're being paraded around to strip support from Donald Trump. Uh, I, I said this last night when a chatter came in to, you know, make attacks a in chat. But, like, the reason these hyper-conservative uh, folks are being paraded around by the Harris campaign is because they've a lot, they, they have recognized that there is such a danger to the country under Donald Trump that they're endorsing Kamala Harris. You know, even, even supposedly nonpartisan folks out there are endorsing Kamala Harris because there is a substantial risk to the country and to our democracy if Donald Trump is elected president. Um, notably, Legal Eagle just the other day uploaded like a 20-minute long endorsement video of Kamala Harris, and he's a lawyer. He typically does not make endorsements around the election times, but he is compelled this time because Donald Trump is a threat to, like, unbiased jurisprudence in America. So, like, that's where we're at, you know? Like, the threat is being recognized by many people across the board who are considered, you know, mainstream political figures. And I just wish we as the left could get our rears and gears to do the same, because this isn't a game. And if the fascists win... It, it's literally life and death for millions of people across the United States and beyond. Millions of people elsewhere around the globe. It, it's really that simple. Are you willing to threaten or even take the lives of millions in order to, I don't know, send an impotent message to the Democratic establishment? Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't think so. I, I, I think that's a bad trade, actually. Multiple members of Trump's military who are four-star generals have come out against him. Yeah. And in retaliation, Donald Trump has come out with plans to, uh, you know, purge the military of anyone who disagrees with him. Oh, not un uncommitted? No, not, not uncommitted, Mr. Miyagi. I, I think most of the uncommitted folks are generally principled. And when the, you know, when the rubber hits the road, they'll, they'll vote to prevent fascism from taking over America. But there are more people on the fringe or just people who haven't educated themselves, uh, you know, loud voices in the online space uh, who advocate for people to just throw away their votes. I see these comments every day on every single video that I put up about Jill Stein or Cornell West. You know, like I, I see it not all, all over on the Internet. Um, so I, I would not, by the way, put that on the uncommitted movement like they they actually have organization um and they actually have principles which is different from a lot of third party voters I don't understand how that's standing in solidarity with Palestine if we're taken over by fascists well the argument that they would put forward CD Barra is essentially that um we're already under a fascist under, you know, Joe Biden, and we'd be under a fascist under Kamala Harris. And so really it, it makes no difference if Kamala Harris or Donald Trump takes power because they're both fascists and equally bad. Except if that were true, Israel would not be pushing for Donald Trump to be the president over Kamala Harris because it, they would be winning either way. <laughs> 
You know, they wouldn't be putting resources into the Trump campaign. They wouldn't be having Benjamin Netanyahu have private meetings with Donald Trump. You know, like that, these things wouldn't be happening. Anyway. Tim Walls called Elon Musk a dumbass, and that that's pretty great. You know, let's just take the moment to enjoy it, huh? <laughs> 